Hi, my name is Ayo. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Birmingham studying political economy. I'm also a 2018 Amos Bursary cohort scholar who's just recently turned alumni. Today I'm joined by Darren from Goldman Sachs and Michael from Barrington and Hibbert. Today we're going to be having a great conversation about the Amos Bursary, life and the suits that I am currently wearing. Um, yeah, so let's get straight into it. Um, so how are you two gentlemen today? Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Doing great. Yeah. It's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here today to see um, so many fantastic students looking far better than myself and, <laughs> and Darren today. So thank you so much for having us. Thank you for being here with us. Um, and whilst we're on that note of looking good, um, we must say um, a massive thank you to the both of you um, for the donation of the suits that we're currently wearing. Um, the suits have been made by Mortz and More, um, a black owned suit company. Um, so it's actually amazing to see the great work that they're doing, the great work that both Darren and Michael are doing on us. So I'm your model of the suits for today. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to hear a bit more about you guys' upbringing, what you guys are up to on the day to day, um, and how you came in contact with the Amos Bursary. Yeah, Darren, do you, do you want to kick off? Stop, um, look, again, Ayo, it's, a, it's a real pleasure to, to be here today. Um, look, in terms of my background, I think it's really important to sort of talk about that as a reason why I'm involved in Amos Bursary, because I could have done with the Amos Bursary um, when I was growing up. I, was grew, I grew up in northwest London, um, a single parent household, a council estate. Um, my mum was my role model and she was amazing. Um, but I needed some role models, right? And, and again, for me, why I've been such a big proponent and a supporter of the Amos Bursary for the last 10 years is one, I really needed a program like that. But also I see great talent in you and, and your other um, cohort members. So that's why it was really important for me, not only to, to be a mentor, but also to be a sponsor. And it's so humbling to be in a situation where I can financially contribute to these 150 suits for, for you and your colleagues to be able to show up to interviews at Goldman's and at other organizations looking sharp and also representing um, the charity to its fullest. Darren? Yeah, I mean, not, dis not dissimilar, Michael. I grew up in East London, pretty normal household. I was very grateful to have two parents that uh, emphasized education to me and emphasized achievement and you know they, they saw potential in me and you know, encouraged me and uh, of course a number of different ways to uh, to capitalize on that uh, on that potential and that I think is what I see in a lot of Amos Bursary students the the immense amount of potential that is kind of latent within within them and the ability to kind of channel that and unlock that with a little bit of guidance a little bit of coaching a little bit of mentoring and a lot of hard work into real achievement and what we've seen when I've interviewed or when I've been in, involved and engaged with Amos Bursary um, alumni is a real kind of level of understanding of what, what the process looks like, mm -hmm. how to turn up on time, how to be prepared for interviews, how to look, how to respond, uh, you know, firm handshakes, looks in the eye, those kind of things that you may not be told by anybody outside the bursary, but you learn those types of things. You learn how to prepare yourself, you learn how to look, you learn how to speak. Um, you learn how to engage with people, you learn how to prepare yourself for a corporate experience and those kinds of things, difficult to kind of know what you don't know. Uh, but if you, with the engagement with the bursary, certainly in my experience, recent experience has been incredible in terms of preparing young people for those types of interactions where first impressions really do count. Right. So I must say a massive thank you once again, really appreciate it. Um, so I would say, so straight onto the suits, um, what was the motivating factor behind getting them? Um, again, a, a lot of the things that I, I do is actually based on experience. Um, so again, growing up in um, a lower social economic background, um, at 18, 19, trying to get a job in the workplace, I was wearing um, a black pair of um, school trousers, which uh, I left school at 16, so they're two years old, or uh, uh, off-white white shirt, a feeler jumper that I, I nicked from my brother. Um, and I remember going into an office, um, and it's for a temporary role, um, many years ago, and I, I just felt really uncomfortable, right? I was wearing a pair of um, black Reebok classics, you know, back in the day, 
which um, we all used to wear at school. I don't know what you did, Dan, but but that that was my uniform. So I, th there was many things that I felt in terms of insecurities walking into that environment. And given the, the, the headwinds that we're facing in terms of the economy, um, the fact that people from lower social economic backgrounds are often the ones who are going to struggle in recessions. I thought it was really important to be able to, again, give back. And there's a lot of things that Darren and I and many others have, have been doing. But being able to give you a suit, um, an Amos bursary suit, an Amos bursary tie, is a uniform. And remember, Amos bursary is selective. So you and your peers are elite. You've been trained. Going back to Darren's point, you've gone through a process. So when a Goldman's or a Morgan Stanley or any other organization meets you and your peers and they see that uniform, you've got that credibility. So you're walking in, head held high, and it makes a difference. And I want to ask you a question. How does it make you feel? Like a million bucks. <laughs> Um, definitely, like as you said, um, in terms of comfortability and confidence, I think what you wear in certain environments definitely plays a massive role. Um, and I think when coming back to your situation, I guess once you're feeling uncomfortable in an environment, it then impacts your ability to perform in a role, it impacts your confidence. So you can't bring your best self. Um, I think the short, short time I've been in this suit, I've been able to walk around in this environment a bit more a bit more proud with my head held high, my chest up, um, almost like a new man. Um, and it's something that does make a massive difference. Um, you, yeah. you, you make a really interesting point. I think especially with, uh, from communities that are not used to being, uh, not naturally used to being in kind of corporate situations, when you're first generation, either uni or first generation working in the corporate setting, the first thing you try and do is credibilize yourself. And in every interaction, when you meet somebody you know, they're, they're looking to see whether, you know, are you, do you belong here? How long have you been here? Are you competent, etc. And your suit says a lot about you. The way you look says a lot about you immediately. That kind of credible, yeah, this person is supposed to be here. Once they're here, you're associated with brands like the Amos Bursary, which is a very powerful brand now and increasingly so. You say, I'm an Amos Bursary scholar. I'm alumni now, I went through the process, people are like, okay, got it, Birmingham University, yeah, got it. So you're associating yourself with really strong brands and that the, the suit as part of that kind of jigsaw of what makes you credible in a workplace, in an interview, uh, in a conversation with a client potentially, those types of things are really important. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think it's very interesting to see this uniform thing come back full circle. Um, going from a uniform that's made you feel very uncomfortable and out of place to now having a uniform that almost validates and solidifies your place. Um, and it's a physical representation of the things that we have underneath. Um, not that without the suit, you are out of place, but I think it's just that cherry on top to show the outside world that almost a physical representation of all of the hard work that we're doing behind closed yeah, doors. I couldn't agree more. Um, and not just our work, but the work of loving men like you guys who have been putting in the work and have found yourself working with Amos Bursary and other charities. Um, so we really appreciate things like this. Um, are there other charities that, you'd, that you're that you working with um, and anything that you'd love to see in the philanthropic space? That, that's, a, that's a really great point. And I think one of the, the points I think we, we should emphasize as well is more and more. It was really important for me to work with a black owned business you know Josh is an incredible guy he's a great stylist and I thought it was really important to bring Josh onto the project because he gets us mm. do you understand yeah. and when we're talking about style and how to wear the suits I thought it was really important and inspirational for, for you guys to see that there's other black owned businesses out there wanting to get involved in this initiative. So as I said before, I think it's really important in terms of um, organizations that see you realize the amount of work that you're, you and the, your cohort are putting in. This is being recorded on a Saturday afternoon. You know, you're giving back. So again, in 15 years time, I've got no doubt when you're in a position to sort of contribute like this, you're gonna lean back in. 
So that's why myself and Darren, we, we work with a number of other charities which are underrepresented groups about giving youth an opportunity. So for me, that's really why we do it, is to try and level the playing field, give all underrepresented groups access opportunities to thrive. Yeah, no, I'd echo that. I think there are a number of kind of community-based organizations that are targeted at equalizing playing fields and making sure that opportunity is democratized. I work with Urban Synergy, um, we work with Mentivity organizations that the firm has sponsored, that my firm has sponsored, that I've known for years kind of prior to my um, rejoining Goldman. But it's, I think the, the most important thing for all of us, I think, is w whether it's within an organization or outside of an organization, if you meet somebody wherever they are um, and they need some mentoring, they need some counseling, they need just a word of advice or um, you know, a point in the right direction, a connection on LinkedIn or a connection personally, and you know one, one or two things one or two things that you might be able to 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 um, uh, advise on or two or three introductions that you might be able to make could actually change the direction of a person's you know tra change the trajectory of somebody's career and then potentially somebody's life so those types of things i think it's well while we are kind of obliged to do it it's also quite fun yeah. to you know to engage with young men like you yeah. And the rest of your kind of cohort earlier today, I was speaking to like uh, probably 15 uh, of your of your colleagues and cohort earlier, just talking through my story and, and doing a bit of Q&A on what it's like to be um, at an investment bank and what it's like to you know, go through difficult situations potentially. And that, you know, I hope um, that they will take that information and not just kind of keep it to themselves, but tell their friends, people that are outside of, or, or other people who are inside the Amos Bursary program and outside, you know, I met this guy, he said this thing, this really resonated with me, you might want to uh, consider this. Uh, you know, those types of things, hopefully that information, you know, we've, we've earned that information <laughs> over the course of the years and that, you know, our, our responsibility to give that information should be kind of multiplied, I think, through the community. And as they say, knowledge is power. So it is so important to go out, spread this information, and continue to give give back. Um, I would ask, as a bursary scholar alumni, if there's a way that we can give back or confirm to you guys that your investment in us has been worthwhile. Look, I think that in terms of your your obligation to give back, it goes through stages, right? Now, yeah. you we we are here on Saturday afternoon, the other facilitators are here on Saturday afternoon, you've given up your time, you have obviously an incredible amount of potential, people are investing in you, you need to kind of repay that with an investment in yourself, the, you know, the, the difference between potential and achievement is hard work, so we rely on you to put that hard work in to make sure that your potential turns into achievement. We expect that you know, as you, as you go forward, you are not just the recipient of mentoring, but you're the provider of mentoring you're finding people to mentor the best way to be you know the best way to be mentored is also to be a mentor um, and then as you as Michael alluded to early as you become more and more successful as you become more and more senior as, as you accrue more and more responsibility you should be on this side of the chair and then there'll be the next generation in your seat where you know you're saying I'm helping I'm contributing I'm giving back I'm investing in you generationally and again not just through organizations but more broadly in in uh, you know across all of your interactions with people who are uh, less visible less represented you know again equalizing uh, equalizing playing fields right. thank you I, I don't think there's too much i can add to darren's point i think ultimately what you're doing now um you're already repaying us back and i'll just l close this out where i had somebody um, 22 years ago give me a chance so when I moved to America they gave me a chance they mentored me and I remember looking at him confused and actually saying look why are you doing this and he said look I believe in you and I said well how can I repay you and he said when you're ready you're gonna do the same thing that I've done for you tenfold and I think that really closes it off pretty well in terms of that's your obligation is to make sure that you, people can build on your shoulders. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so you've heard it here. Thank you so much, Darren and Michael.
we've had 150 suits, a wealth of advice and information that money couldn't, you couldn't use money for value. Um, so I've been IO from the Amos Bursary and closing out.